that we have used. Also, that because of this, it seals beautifully all under there. So. Hi everyone. My husband and I, when we first heard about COVID-19 virus, we really wanted to help. We found that there was a lot of great mask patterns out there, but there was not much about the filtration system inside. And so we thought we would have work on this and find out what was the best that we could find from products we can use at home. As you can see, we've put a wire in here. Turn your head aside, thank you. And you can see that we've got it sealed through here because of the wire that we have used. Also, that because of this, it seals beautifully all under there. So you can see that this gives you a good fit. Also, you've got lots of room in here for breathing. We also have made another version. Uh, this is great for short periods of times where you can use a hair elastic. But if you're going to be wearing the mask for a long period of time, it is better with the other kind of elastic which you thread through. The first thing I asked my husband, what was the best fabric to use for filtering and why? Okay, well also to um, what my wife also asked me is, we need to, it needs to be from easily obtainable materials around the home. So the thing, the two things we settled on, um, because this is like a two-stage filter, the first thing we decided on for the first stage, that's at the front of the mask, was this very, very common, readily available microfiber cloth. One thing, one important thing though, it needs to be plain like this, not patterned or, or like this, because this leaves spots where the filtering is not going to work. So we want to use this type of material, okay? Then the second layer of the filter is made from t-shirt cotton. It doesn't have to be new. It can be a, it can be a used t-shirt. Uh, wash it first though. You can also obtain this kind of used material in, in bags of rags you can buy at your supermarket or your, or your um, hardware shop. And as you can see, it's cotton and it's got quite a density to it. Yes. The other thing for the inside yeah. of the mask is calico. And the outside, just to make it a bit more like fun, I've used some quilting material. You also need knicker elastic. Or underwear elastic in some other countries. Oh <laughs> yes, I'm forgetting. Yeah. Or hair elastic, which you can see which people use for making ponytails. The other thing, because most Kiwis are gardeners, they have this rubber covered wire usually around because it's used for tying trees and plants, plants yeah. and things. So we've used this because it's, it makes it nice and pliable, but also it's thick enough to help make a decent seal around the nose area. Of course, some wire cutters, because you do not want to use your wife's good sewing scissors for no, cutting no, them. No, 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 no. Otherwise... Otherwise you might be in isolation for longer than the shutdown. Yeah, you mm. might be grounded to <laughs> another room. <laughs> so that is why we have got that. So now let's get started. Yes, yeah, so we've supplied a pattern here pattern here which there will be a link below for you to be able to download this pattern. So the first thing you'll need is your pattern. So as you can see on this pattern there are two lines. For the outside piece of your pattern which is the piece of material you'll see on your mask you will cut it for the whole outside area. If it's the for the filtration and the calico, so for the calico the microfiber and your t-shirt material, you'll cut it from to that line there all the way around. What we're going to do is find the piece of fabric we're going to use for the outside of the mask. We fold it in half so the good side that we're going to see on our mask is on the inside of the material. Then we get our pattern and as you can see it's the full pattern and we'll pin it on. We 
that way it doesn't move around while we're busy cutting it out. So we will cut this out like this, around the pattern. So as you can see, we've got that one cut out. Now, I suggest you print an, another one to cut the smaller one without this piece on it because this is what you're going to need to cut your microfiber cloth in half. Fold it over so you'll get two of that. Do the same for your calico and or t-shirt material. So you'll put these on here like that, pin it and cut that around like you saw I did with the previous material. So I've already got some prepared in advance, so we'll show you the next stage. Now that we've cut all our pieces out, we're going to put together in order what we need for the inside of the mask. First, we have the calico pieces, so that goes down first. Then we put the t-shirt material on top of that, because we are going to want that the closest to your face. Like so. Then we put on the microfiber on top of that. It is very important it is in this order because this is what gives the maximum pr protection within the mask with the materials that we are using. So first it is the calico, then it is your t-shirt material and then it is your microfiber material. Now we need to sew a quarter inch seam all the way around. So I'll show you this on a sewing machine. But we're going by this quarter of an inch seam here, which we're going to line up with our line of our fabric and sew all the way around. Now, I always give a little bit of a gap so you don't go right off the edge. You allow for the quarter inch seam to go in because we're going to need to snip this away later. So, so we will sew this not quite to the end as you can see this has gone over a little bit further than our main material and then we sew down here as the microfiber on this one has actually been cut a little bit more than the other which I can see underneath and then all the way around as you can see I'm not going right to the end I'm leaving what be roughly a quarter of an inch in there because we need to trim that away because we don't want all that bulk because we'll be breathing around that in our mask and it'll leave a big lump which we do not want. You may ask why don't you just make a filter um, out of the material instead of um, sewing this on but I feel that this will stop a chance of it bulking or moving around and you can just sew it on and it will make it easier for washing. Now as you can see we've sewn that all the way around now we're up to the next stage. Now that you have sewn both of these, we need to trim away the excess. I like to turn them this way so you turn away the piece of fabric you don't want to cut, which is your calico. And we're just trimming away the microfiber and the t-shirt material as close as we can without actually cutting the calico or the stitching. This way you won't have a whole lot of bulk on your mask. It will also make it quicker and easier for drying because you won't have that extra ridge of layer of material inside your mask when you need to clean it. So we'll do this all the way around like that and I've already done a prepared one to show you so we don't waste time doing this. So when it is finished it will look like this. See trimmed all the way around. As you can see I've now cut around both of these which we had just done. So now we're going to sew the two together. So we place it so that the two calico pieces go on the inside. And we match these up. If you don't feel confident sewing on the quarter inch line going through all the fabric material, you can put a couple of pins in. I like to put them away from the seam simply so that I don't accidentally sew on the pin and break my needle. So now we are sewing on that same seam again all the way around to join them together. So we'll go the machine to do this. Now when we do this we will make, go forward a little bit then we'll go backwards a little bit and then forwards again. What that does is it 
stops it from the stitches from undoing, which we do not want a mask to come undone. And then we sew along that seam all the way around. And we do the same thing at this end. So now you will see we have got the inside of our mask. So on to the next step. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing for the outside piece. We're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam all the way around there. Once we have done that, we will snip along this one and along this one. As you can see on one that I've done previously to save us a bit of time, I've sewn around here like we did this one and I've snipped in here. So what we do to show you on this one is you snip it just before the seam. What that does is it stops it being all bulky under the mask because we want our mask to be as comfortable as possible to wear for when we are out and about. Right, now we've got that done, we're going to pull this piece, this one out, like this, and put this one this way. We're going to open this one out, so we have the good calico piece go inside the piece that we're going to have out, so the two raw edges are on the outside. Now I need to show you what nesting is. We put, push the seam that way for this one, push the seam the opposite way, so it's like a little ridge and it puts them together. It's called nesting. If you do quilting, you'll understand what that is. And then we will put a couple of pins in here. As you can see, this is shorter than the other, but you'll understand this when we get further along in the project. So now what we're going to do, and once I've pinned this, is we're going to Backstitch here, sew across there, go down there and backstitch there. We're also going to do the same thing on this side and the same thing with our nesting. That's gone that way, so that will go that way, that goes the opposite way, so we don't have any problems with our seams. And we'll pin those here like that. Right, so we'll go back to the sewing machine. We're going to go backwards across there, across that line there, right to the end, and backwards to there. Back stitching there, going all the way around to back stitch to there. So we'll go and do that now. So we're going to sew along the line here. So we go forward a bit, back a little bit, because remember we're doing this so our seams don't come undone. And then we're sewing along that line. As you can see, I'm sewing along the line that we had sewn with the microfiber. So we do the seam as well. And as you can see, I'm catching the microfiber again so that it is very stable in the mask. And I'm doing my backwards and forwards. So we're right again. And then we lift off the seam. We also do the same with the straight seam across the bottom, which we'll quickly do this. Backwards. Now what I'll do is I'll trim up all the excess cotton on the end and then I'll show you how to fold it through and what the next stage is to do with the wire. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to put a wee bit of snips in through here because that is a curve and we don't want that puckering and being uncomfortable because it will be bulk. Oh there's a little bit there I missed so we'll trim that off as well because we don't want that on our mask. So as you can see I'm just making sure that's neat and tidy there and we trim a little bit there it's just where the curves are just a wee bit there the other thing is too where the seam is here just a little bit in front of it I cut that off where the nose is that way you don't have a lot of bulk through there and now we've, we can pull this through excuse me I've got an assist, furry assistant in the corner here no bright ranger He's been helping me make masks most of today. I think he thinks it's his toys. 
as you can see it's got that all nice and tidy now what I do here is I sew against the edge just a, a seam against this just this piece here so I'll put in a couple of pins as you can see I'm just rolling it back so it's nice and tidy because this may be coming a new fashion in the well we've got the COVID thing you know what style of mask have you got on so we're going to quickly sew along here and then we will show you how to put the wire in and see I'm just sewing just on the very edge of this just to hold it in place this is so that it will be always neat and tidy when you go to wash it it won't be out, go out of shape quite the same and you're thinking oh how am I going to get my mask back into shape Edge where we can feel the end of where the microfiber is at the other end. There we go. And as you can see, we've got that on there, keeps it nice and flat and in place. Now we'll go back to the other area so I can show you how to measure and put in the wire. Now we're ready to put in our twisty tie material, which this stuff is used quite regularly in gardens for tying around trees. It has a big thick piece of rubber which helps with the seal of the mask and wire inside. So we need 17 centimetres or 6.7 inches. So we measure that off. So I'll put that on the 17 there. And that's it there. Get our wire cutters. And we'll cut that off. And as you can see that was very easy. Now the next thing we do is we fold it in half. Now the reason why I do that, it makes it easier to put in the mask. So then you just poke it in here. So you can feel that in there. Poke that one that side. Put your fingers in. And of course, Murphy's Law when you're on camera. And you poke that one on that side. So then you've got these in here, like so. Now I'm going to need my zipper foot because what we're going to do is we are going to sew from here right around to there Oh, to there and there to sew this all in place so it doesn't move out of place because that's important you don't want your wire somehow sagging down here so the best way to do that is to sew into place so we're going to use our zipper foot or if you don't have a zipper foot you can tack it around by hand it's just to keep it into place so now we're going to sew this on with the sewing machine always take my time doing this because otherwise you can muck it up up and around, push that right against there, and now we can sew it on all the way around. As you can see, it's it's, it's a bit like um, sewing around a big piece of piping, but in this case, it is our wire, and we just make sure it's all sitting in place where it should be. And that will hold that into place and then we go back and forth and hold this a few times and then that is done now there's two ways now at this point of the mask that you can have you can either use hair elastics or the other elastic so the first one I'm going to, method I'm going to show you is with the two hair elastics so that they just clip behind your ears I recommend this is only for short periods of time because if you need it all day you will find it sometimes can hurt your ears a little bit so let's go ahead and make this one so what we do is we put the hair elastic in here like this and we fold this over so that goes on there like that for you guys I will fold this over again so that's all neat and tidy and what we're going to do you can either fold this under again like this and just straight stitch it or if you're worried about it coming apart you can zigzag it and you do this to both sides so let's get this done first normally I'll just sew them but I think for today's viewing this might be the safer way to go and so we'll do the same thing again as you can see I've tucked them under nicely some people might actually iron those so 
because we don't want any raw edges. Especially if this isn't for you and you're doing this for a healthcare worker. We want them neat and tidy as possible so that they can feel that someone's given them a bit of care and concern. So in this case I'm going to do a straight stitch all the way down, take my pin out, and go back again because remember this is to anchor it all into place so it doesn't go anywhere. And we do the same thing this side. And now we'll do the same thing with this side. And then we, all we have to do after that is trim off our excess bits of cotton that we've got there. So keep it all nice and tidy. that one is done just like that so we'll trim these off and then we can start the next one now the other type you can do with the same mask is you can use elastic in this case I've used what some people call underwear elastic or knicker elastic because that's the elastic I happen to have at home so people suggest 22 inches that's the circumference of the average head so you can do that if you've got children who've got slightly smaller heads, that's one thing to do. So we are doing 22 inches. So that's 12, 22 inches. And then we cut that off. So that is ready for when we need to thread that through. Now, as you can see here, we're going to sew along the seam here sew along the seam here now some people say why do you do that it's going to make it easier later for threading the elastic through so we're going to do that for both sides so we're just going to quickly sew these down because it will make that easier I find anything that's going to make it easier for threading later that's what I try and do Now you will do exactly the same thing for the other side. You can see that I've just used what cotton I've got lying around because I figure having masks, even if the cotton doesn't match, is going to be more important than saying I can't make a mask because I've got the I haven't got everything matching properly. And I'd rather help our colleagues who are out there on the front lines feel a bit safer having a mask than not having a mask because it wasn't the latest fashion. So, once we've trimmed those all off, you can either fold that under like that and like that and sew it. Or, like what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put mine like that under there. And then we just sew across there. You will see now that we have got a nice gap in here for threading the elastic. So we're going to sew down here. ends off the small safety pin because you've got to have one that can fit through the hole and that makes it easier for threading so you, you go down thread through this one here like this then you go through to this one here and up the other end
and now we will zigzag these together these two together also multiple times whoops make sure that they don't twist so that, that they are the same so both like that go around that way like that and we are going to zigzag across there a few times because we don't want that coming undone now we're going to i've selected zigzag on my sewing machine and we're now going to zigzag this on we're going to go forward a few times and then back a few times and then we hit the back switch button and then go back a few times and then forward one more time and that way we'll make sure that it does not come under there we go and now we'll trim this off and then I can show you what they both look like on now this is the one to do with the ears so you pop this behind this ear like this, then this one behind the ear like this, then you pop that down like that, and then you squish this in so that it moulds your face, because everybody's nose is different, and as you can see, that fits nicely around here, seals it all up in here, keeps it all nice and tidy around here and under here. So that is the one for the ears, now I'll show you how to do the other one. Now this one uses the two elastics. Oh, so you'll grab the two there, pop this on here, one goes up top, one goes underneath, and then you squish the nose once again, because as you saw when it was all loose before, and then I squished it all in so that it's moulded to my face, put that there, and there you go, see? You can see through here that it's all nicely folded, moulded into my face in here, no gaps which is very important it's also very comfortable so have a good have a great day and i hope you have fun sewing this okay so now that you've made your mask it's important that you know how to clean and take care of it so we're going to talk about that a little bit so here's the here's the way to do it you can get yourself a bucket or some other container that you're not going to be using for anything else and you want to put uh, some water in it some clean water and how much it's important that you measure how much you put in so what I recommend uh, for people in the northern hemisphere or those people that do quarts and gallons you want to put even numbers of um, quarts of, of clean water in your container. So let's say, for example, you only have one mask you want to clean. So you're probably only going to need a couple of quarts of water in the bucket. Now, what do we use to clean these masks um, and to also disinfect them? Well, the best product used for that is an oxygen based bleach. And it comes under many different brand names, but, it, but most of them will have words like nappy sand or oxy action so the main thing is you want an oxygen um, bleach not your usual chlorine bleach that's not the right product to use for this now it usually comes in a powder form as well all right so what we do is let's say you have two liters or two quarts in your in, of water in your container so what you do is you put a tablespoon of this powder per quart or per liter in the in the container. Now also it's good to use warm water so that it dissolves easily. So if you put that into the water, mix it up well, and then when it's all dissolved, you take your mask or masks and you place them um, into the container, and soak them into the water and leave them for 30 minutes. All right, once that's done then you take them out and you have another container of another container of clean water and then you want to rinse them thoroughly and you want to do that at least twice so rinse tip out the, the water fresh water rinse one more time and then when you do the second rinse you want to add some fabric softener now this is important because what it does is it makes sure that the fibers in the filter material that's between the two layers stays working um, 
at its optimum. So, how, how much do we use? Okay, again, if you're dealing in liters, you want to put half a teaspoon per liter of water in your final rinse, or um, half a teaspoon per quart in your final rinse. And so, so, that, so that's your second rinse, and once that's done, you can then remove the masks and leave them to dry. If you have good weather and it's sunny, um, a good place to, to do that is just to hang it on the clothesline and let it get a bit of sun as well. Otherwise, find somewhere where you can put it where it's warm, where it can dry out. And once you've done that, you're ready to go again. And uh, that's how you take care of your mask.